Microphone test, microphone test, microphone test, microphone test, stream, microphone test. Microphone test, microphone All right. How about microphone test, microphone test, microphone test, microphone test. Uh, that is fairly acceptable. How about we change it to maybe about there, and there we do it again. Microphone test, microphone audio test, microphone audio test, microphone audio test, 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 music, microphone audio test. Well, that's about right, I think. Uh, let's see, we switch over to... Uh, the desktop. Well, that's about right, I think. Uh, okay, that should be alright. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna tone down the music slightly. Okay, that should be alright. Okay, that's good. Uh, well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, hello. Got that. Got this. Um, I should do a fancy intro. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome. Am I even visible if I lean back like this? This is a very professional setup, I know. Yes, yes, good. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome today um, to the very first Viscount Class Star Defender build stream. Today we are, of course, going to start building the Viscount. Um, <coughs> I've switched over to the microphone on my headphones, which I think are uh, slightly better than the one in the webcam, so... <coughs> Not only should my voice be slightly louder, but it should also be slightly higher quality. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful day outside. I, I hope the, the light isn't too bright. Um, the webcam does kind of make it slightly brighter than it's supposed to be, but that's okay. Um, we got basically everything we need uh, for today. We have, uh, we have drink, we have some food, which I tried to finish before the stream started, but I wasn't entirely... Uh, able to to do so and of course we have a beautiful ship to build which is of course the viscount star defender which let's switch over to desktop um i have tried to find a few uh, 3d models online of this ship just to see how other people built the ship um basically the story with the viscount is very simple um there aren't a lot of people who've actually modeled the ship um, two of the more well-known ones are, of course, um, the original one made by Evil Jedi, which is at this point very, very old. Um, it's still it's still solid, but it is fairly old. Um, the other the other one, of course, being made by Warp Null, which is um, a long-time community member of Empire at War and who has made countless models and free released them. Um, his model is also free released. Uh, you can download that from his OneDrive, which is on the SmartDB profile, uh, for use by every modder that basically wants to use it. Um, we are, of course, going to make our own version, and I want to preface this as I start 3ds Max. Uh, this should be visible. Yeah, that's good. And I'll also turn the music back on and turn down the audio for me slightly so I can hear myself talk. Um, I want to preface this by saying that the Viscount is definitely going to be one of the more challenging builds that I've done. Not only because it is one of the uh, the, the Giga ships, so to say. It's one of the it's a 17 kilometer long Star Dreadnought, which is always, of course, going to be a challenge to build. But also because it is one of the few Mon Calamari ships that I've actually built. I haven't built that many Mon Calamari ships in the past, um, but I have done some research before this. In um, about 3ds Max and what tools you can use to really get that shape of ship uh, going, which is of course the curved, uh, round, spherical type of starship. Um, that should make it significantly easier. And um, I've asked her a couple of people for their tips and tricks on how uh, to build it, and I think that's going to make it significantly easier. I've had some some absolutely wonderful um, advice from people on how to how to get the shapes um, down and such, how to manipulate them best in, in 3ds Max. And that's gonna help, app, it's gonna help a lot, basically. Let me see if the stream is all right. 
Yes, alright, we've got some people here. Alex, welcome to the stream, man. Currently we've got five viewers. Hopefully that's gonna pick up. Um, let's see, maybe we should have the webcam angled slightly down. Hang on a second, sorry guys. Yeah, that, that should be okay. Alright. Um, other existing models of the Viscount are, of course, um, for example, the model made for the Thrones Revenge mod. Which is, of course, this one. Which is also good. Um, I'm not a fan of this one um, as much. Uh, mostly because it has uh, the engines sticking out very much. I like to see those things very much integrated into the into the ship so that it looks like a very um, so that it looks like a, a, a unified hull hull sort of uh, this is evil jedi's model um, this, this one is a little bit more angly than the other ones it is mostly built out of a single object which means that it plays very nicely with the smoothing groups and um, there are some more hard edges warp Null's model is this one um, this one is very, very curvy and round, which of course the Viscount is supposed to be, but this one in particular has so many curves everywhere and everything. Whereas if you look at Evil Jedi's model, I, I wish there was a better um, a better view for that. That's not entirely it. Let me see if I can find one real quick. To, to, just to show you guys what were <clears throat> what has historically existed in the community. Um, in terms of Viscount models and then of course I'll go into how I plan to build my version and how that's going to differ from the existing ones. Um, but first as I said I want to show you the ones that exist. I can't currently find a good image of um, evil Jedis, at least not a good overview so I suppose this one will have to do. If you compare this one for example to the warp null model, you will see uh, immediately a few differences. This one looks very more, very much more uh, rounded, as I said. It's got very nice curves everywhere. Um, it's got a very interesting overall shape. I kind of, I kind of think it's interesting, but it's definitely something different than what I'm going to be going for. Namely, this one is if you look at the um, outline, it's a very, very thick ship. It's very fat, so to say. Um, mine is definitely going through a, is going to go through a little bit of a, um, a diet, so to say. I do plan to make it a little bit thinner because I think that if you really want to get that sense of scale uh, down, you need to you need to build the ship as if it were a gargantuan uh, star dreadnought. And in doing so, I think it makes sense to make it a little bit slimmer. But as we as we start the build, um, I'll I'll explain a little bit more about that. So yeah, Evil, Evil Jedi's version has um, a lot more angles to it, which is a, a lot less curves and a lot more straight angles, especially uh, down. It, it gives it a sort of triangle shape from the top down. I kind of like that um, because I think it sets it apart very nicely from the already existing Mon Calamari cruisers that we know, which are, of course, uh, um, ships like the, the MC-80, uh, basically the ones that everybody already knows about. And I kind of liked that when I first saw this one. Um, because I think it really sets it apart and because it sets it so much apart from the rest um, I think that that makes it so unique and that gives it the sense of scale again it gives it that alien look which I, I appreciate it very much um, there's also some great details on the warp null model which are absolutely wonderful which I'm going to try to incorporate into mine as well um, but yeah, that, that is the existing models. I, I, I can show you the... Um, oh, that's the music that we're going to be playing today. Um, there's also the uh, Thrawn's Revenge model, which um, I'll have a m brief look at. Uh, can we find that here? We may be able to find that here. Um, I can't see it in the list right now, so we're just going to search for this count. They may not even have... Oh, okay, so they do have it. I was wondering, they, they may not actually have it in the um, in the mod files. This is the... Uh, let's get a little bit more light here. Uh, change that to uh, 40. Shadow color. Right. This is the Viscount Starfender build for the Thrones Revenge mod. 
Um, I think it was actually built for their Sins of the Soul Empire mod, Ascendancy. Um, but they're, they're also using it for uh, Thrawn's Revenge, of course. Now this one has very uh, particular engines because they stick out very much. I'm going to try to do that very much differently. Um, it does have some nice hangers, of course. A feature of the Viscount is that the hangers are very much um, in the sort of the front jaw, if I were to say it, which is this front part, which you can see everywhere. Here you can see it as well in the bottom front part of the jaw, you can see the hangers. I still think that um, most of the Viscount models that currently exist do not really look the scale that they're supposed to be. Um, what does that mean? Well, basically I mean that, um, for example, these minor details such as uh, well, the texture and, for example, the hanger, if you want to make a ship like this look as large as it actually is, you need to make these very small. Or at least you, you need to make um, changes to the existing design so that, in comparison, the rest of the ship looks larger. That's exactly what I did with, for example, the Eclipse, um, and as well as the Executor. And I'm going to try to do the exact same here with the Viscount. Um, other changes from the Thrawn's Revenge model um, to the other existing models is this one is very, very much straight. You can see very much that this ship is, um, is, is basically going in one straight line. Whereas if you look at the Warp Null model, which um, I may still have here, but I am not sure. We will we'll see. Uh, Viscount? I always used to say Viscount, by the way. So I, I may mispronounce it as Viscount a couple of times during the stream. It's just a force of habit, so to say. This is the Viscount Vi Viscount, sorry. Um, that wasn't on purpose, I swear. This is, of course, the Viscount made by Warpnall. Let's see if I can get a little more light in here. Uh -huh. Okay. This is, of course, the Viscount made by Warpnall. Um, which, if you look at this one, this one is not very much straight at all. It has this very um, downward sloping look. As you near the front of the ship, um, it's, it's very much lower than the rear. Um, I think that's an interesting concept and I'm definitely going to try a couple of variations in the general shape of the ship before we are going to decide on what exactly we're going to settle on. Um, because I do think this has a lot of potential and I do like the downward curving hull, so to say. Um, but, but as I said, I, I'll have to see which shape I, I personally prefer and which one is going to look best. Because um, the same issue that I think the Thrones Revenge model suffers from a little bit is this one. Which is, it, it simply doesn't look like a 17 kilometer long Dreadnought. If I, if I can um, pick my Eclipse up for a second, which is also 17 and a half kilometers long. Um, I try to very much make this look like it is a huge starship uh, right and some tricks that I try to incorporate in to make it actually look that big is for example I use very small detailing uh, okay so that doesn't we do need to actually see some of it which helps um, right for example all this detailing that you see here this is along the trench the the trench of course itself is very uh, small, but all of this detailing is very, very minor in comparison to the rest of the ship. Which, if you compare it, for example, if you set an Imperial Star Destroyer besides this, this is still pretty large detailing. It's it's still the scale you would see on an ISD, for example. Um, but it's got the same scale on the Eclipse, which really gives it a sense of of, of scale, of mass, that you, you get the idea that this is a massive 17 and a half kilometer long dreadnought. Which, at least, I, I think it does. Um, and I think that that is lacking in, for example, the Warp Null model, whereas if you look at this, um, I, I think it simply misses those, those minor details. Which is not to say that this is a bad model, not at all. Uh, not a bad word about Warp Null. Man's a great, great model maker. Um, absolutely love him. Occasionally he still pops in and um, releases models for Empire at War. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going to try to make it a little bit... Um, the details are a little bit smaller to make the ship look larger by comparison. I managed to do it successfully on the Executor and the Eclipse, and I think I'll be able to do it on the Viscount as well. Um, so that aside, uh, this can go. That, that, that can go as well. 
Um, let's see, anything else to talk about? So we, I've, I've shown you three models that have um, existed so far, I explained a little bit about how I'm going to take their ideas um, and, and, and try to incorporate that into my own model. Um, perhaps there's no time to talk about how I'm going to try to set it up. Um, first, I'll check chat. Hello, uh, mi, mi, oh, no, I'm not going to be able to pronounce that, man. My M1T5UK0. Welcome to the stream, man. That's an impossible name to pronounce. Um, but yeah. So now up to um, how I'm going to try to build my version of the ship. Um, my version of the Viscount is I initially want to try and um, make the ship straight. Which is very much like the Thrawn's Revenge model that I've uh, shown you. Um, because I feel like that simply lends itself better to the scale. I, I think if you incorporate too many vertical aspects, what, like the Warp Null model, while it is interesting, it's also going to make the ship look stranger, more alien by comparison, in a way that is not necessarily conducive to its scale. And I think making a ship like this look good is all about scale. You're gonna you're gonna hear me say that word a lot, scale. Because I think it really is important and in fact pretty much the most important thing and aspect about such a large ship and making it look and feel like this this huge thing that it's supposed to be. Um, so I'm going to initially try to make it um, straight. I am going to experiment with a couple of downward sloping curves exactly like Warp Null uh, did it. And I also want to try to incorporate the more um, straight um, pyramid shaped um, shapes that Evil Jedi went with. So we're, we're going to try a straight starship which is curvy. We're going to try it um, downward sloping as it angles towards the front. As well as the, um, the less curvy more, um, more straight angular. Uh, type of ship. Um, yeah, let, let, let's start by saving the project. That's always a great start, of course. Um, Rebel Mon Calamari Viscount. Vi Viscount, right? Viscount, Viscount. I'm gonna put Star Defender behind it because occasionally I do like to be a little bit pretentious. Okay. Now normally when I always started building uh, Mon Calamari ships, I always started with a sphere and then modified it further with the, um, let, let's see, what's the modifier itself called? The FFD boxes, which is basically where you get like this box and you can take control points and you can like drag them out and it only really um, affects us uh, one part of the model, which is like this part. Now I've recently learned that there is a very useful tool in 3ds Max which I can't believe I've not ever heard before but um, I'll, I'll show you real quick. This for example now we have a box. Um, the model it, or the modifier itself is called uh, subdiv or also known as subdivide. Open subdiv or was it subdiv itself? So that is subdivide Substitute, I don't know what that does. Open subdiv. Um, let me actually check what exactly the difference is. So here we have this. And then if we apply open subdiv. I, I will show you what this does in a second. I just want to uh, see if there is a significant difference. Oh, that's actually quite significant. Yes, yes. Okay. So we're going to use open subdivide. Now, open subdiv. Which, if we take a box again, and we apply the open subdiv... I'm actually going to change the UI here, so that I've got this open subdiv on a button here, like uh, unwrap UVW, edit poly, which is going to make it a lot easier to, to click, because we don't have to keep clicking the drop-down menu and then selecting the button, we can simply press it over here. Um, I think it was in preference. Let me try to find that real quick. Let's see, is the uh, music still going on stream? Is it still audible? Let's see, is the uh, music still going? Yeah, we can we can we can turn that up a bit. 
Okay. Um, no? That, that should be good. Okay. Um, I don't have a second monitor, by the way, guys. So I, I need to constantly keep switching back to... Uh, uh, customize user interface. I have to constantly keep going back to um, Twitch to check if everything is still running properly. Toolbars. No menus, perhaps? No, it's not this. Let's see. I swear it was here, somewhere. Um, right, configure modifier sets. Um, configure modifier. Ah, here we are, okay. So now we're gonna add another button, which is simply gonna be this, and then we are going to find the open subdiv modifier. Um, op optimize, no, it's not here. That is subdivide, we just, we need the open subdiv. What if we just open? No. Open. Okay, that doesn't work. So we have to manually find it in the list. I'm not actually finding it. I do have optimize, but pro optimizer. Turbo smooth, always useful, uh, but not what we're looking for, of course. Is it really not here? Or am I just missing it completely? I may be missing it completely. It is entirely possible. Um, Oh, okay. Let's try the subdivide one, and possibly that may be the one. There are two, though, so... We'll just have two. Okay. Ah, one of... That is subdivide. Okay, so it's none of these. That's unfortunate. Okay, well, in that case, we're just gonna remove these buttons again, which is uh, much simpler than actually setting them up. We simply... Um, go down and down and okay. Basically what the open subdiv modifier does. Okay, so that's the easy way to do this. Is you can take a box. And you can make it. Um, make it smoother by using the uh, open subdiv modifier. Now, as you can see, we started with a box. I can't actually find the triangulation here. That's, this, that is unfortunate. I'm just going to remove that. We're going to go to edible poly. And then we're going to go to open subdiv again. <coughs> now it should show <coughs> the additional um, okay. That's annoying. I can't actually see the extra edges. For example, you can clearly see that it creates the new vertexes, but it should. Why does it not do this? This this modifier is going to be key to modeling this ship. So I do need to actually keep get it under control um, hello there welcome welcome people to the stream we're building the Viscounts of course um, and I'm right now going to try to open subdiv right now I am trying to get the modifier itself under control um, remove modifier from stack configure now show end result toggle on off No, okay, so then why do I not see 
the the edges. We are supposed to see the edges. Okay, everything's still going. Um, luckily, I do, of course, have this saved. Um, solid texture, subdivide. No, I mean the... Um, subdivide... 3DS Max. Um, right. Get that through. I know what I'm looking for. I just need to find the... Um, the exact part of the... Ah, look, that's what I'm looking for. This effect. It is open subdiv. Yes. What does he do then? Isoline displays off. One iteration. Isol. Okay. I thought I clicked that already, but apparently I did not. So what you can see here is that subdivide... Um, basically gives it a more circular circular shape and the more iterations you actually give the um, the modifier the better off it, it's it's going to look you can for example set it to a maximum of six and you now basically have a almost completely round shape it also smooths the edges um, to the point where they're almost no longer visible um, if you go back to say three iterations um, and I'm going to show you the absolute wonders of this modifier because if you now go back to editable poly, you can see the box again and um, you can click this button which is show end result on off. We can now see the result of the open subdiv modifier applied to our box, but we still get to see our box. Why is that significant? That is significant because we can now take, for example, this edge and we can see in real time how exactly this is going to look once it is finished. As you can see, it stretches with the whole thing. Um, so that's a quick explanation of the uh, modifier we're going to be using a lot today. That aside, we can act. We can, well, we can we can actually get started. So let's do so. First, we are going to merge a Imperial Star Destroyer into our scene so that we can set up the scale correctly, because of course we do need that 17 kilometers. Um, where's the ISD? That's the bridge. Right. I don't. I don't have that one here. I do have it over here though. Scenes, restart. Imperial Star Destroyer. Yes, open please. OBG. This is basically the entirety of the um, ISD. Now it's going to be completely white. Which basically means we have to remove the materials. And now we are going to set it up as a gray. Um, we're going to name this one ISD. And we're going to attach everything to this. But it's easier to do this instead. Attach, yes. Uh, now it's all attached to one object and we have our ISD here. Of course the ISD is 1600 meters long. It also casts a shadow, which I, I, I don't like working with. So we're going to turn that off. Ambient occlusion we're going to turn on. Ambient occlusion basically means that if you um, look at the scene and you'll do nothing for a second. No? It's not going to show it? Are we not going to get the ambient occlusion? Okay, apparently we're not going to get the ambient occlusion. Not sure why, but it also doesn't really matter, so... Uh, calc? Um, right, no. I, I don't actually have to divide um, 17 by 1.6 that is about uh, 10 and a half of course actually it's more like 10.6 6 and a half I can do math guys uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 or we just do that which is 8 
that. And now we have 10, which means we just need a little bit extra. Uh, which is about... We need, we need a, a thousand extra meters, which is about that, that part, I think, about here. So this is going to be the length of our star trek. Never understood why they called it Star Defender instead of just Star Trek. Um, let me check chat, because I never check chat. I'm terrible for that. I, I really need to learn to check chat more often. Um, General Kenobi, hello there. This is the master brain behind the great mod for Empire Ball. Thank you, sir. I do appreciate that. Um, need to freshen up on the math before school. Yeah, exactly. It's one long ship. It's definitely going to be a long ship. This is actually only 500 meters shorter than the Eclipse itself. Um, now, what are we going to start as our um, with as our shape? We can, of course, simply take the good old uh, sphere. Angle that forward and then stretch that whole thing out and keep working that but of course we are looking at a ship that's not necessarily a perfect sphere um, I think what they actually did here is they did take a sphere and then stretch it out a whole bunch here and then um, slowly made the vertexes go inward into a curve that's not very difficult to replicate um, but I think it it would actually look better if we didn't do that in fact I think this one looks better um, the general shape at least. I think this also started with a sphere, but he warp angled it downwards and then in, and then put another one on the bottom, which then eventually became the front jaw. Uh, the, the lower jaw, I should say, sorry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Of course, alternatively, we start with our box and we start with the open sub diff one. Let's actually start with clay, because that looks so much better. Hmm. This is now far, far more friendly to look at. Look. This is so much warmer. I greatly enjoy working in this, um, this, this rendering mode, so to say. Now we are going to apply the open subdiv. That is very flat. Um... Let's start with three iterations, and then we're going to go to the box. Actually, we need to set editable poly on top of that. Um, right, so how about we simply... As I said, I do want to try the more triangular shape that Evil Jedi had going. So we're definitely going to um, attempt that. Which I actually wish that I had as a model. I do not. At least not right now. Um, I may have it, even Jedi mod. I may still have it here. I don't know. I'm gonna check. Utility cruisers destroyers. Cruisers. Bulwark. Dauntless. Home one. Mediator. Strident. Strident. Utility. Utility. It won't be in pirate ships, right? Um. This count. No? Okay. Um, let's see. I think I have it somewhere. I just don't know where exactly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to... We're going to open this. This is a very, very large file. It's about um, 25 gigabytes archived. Which is basically just a huge collection of mods. Which I didn't want to have uncompressed on my hard drive. So we're going to wait for this to um, to load and then we're going to find a Viscount, the Evil Jedi Viscount, the one with the uh, more triangular top shape, which as I said we are going to try to uh, emulate. Set this up there, set this up there, this is just very basic, right? This is just the one box, now we're going to set this, and now we can see what that would look like. You can also see that it, I think, shortened it slightly, yes it did. But that's not a problem, of course. Um, that is a very fat shape, isn't it? At least that looks very fat from head on, but 
If you compare it to other models, it's actually not nearly as fat as this, for example. What we can now do is we can go back to Editable Poly and we can turn... Oh, wh wh where's my... I'm supposed to have a... How about we set it there? No, it still doesn't... Show cage. Right. Okay, that it. Um, what we can now do is, for example, add a loop in between. No, no, no. Loop in between. Which I still have not learned how to actually... Um, what did I just click on? Because I get stack selection. That is not what I meant to click on. And I think it's messed up my selection. Okay. Model, show cage, edge. I want all these edges selected. Okay, so now I want a connection in between. All ah, right, it's here. So we can just turn that off. Ah, I see. Now we connect it, and you can immediately see that the shape of the model changes. For example, we can move this forward now. For example, we can reduce the amount that this looks like a triangle in the rear by simply pulling this back. Gargantuan space still though, basically. What we've got right now. Is this finished loading? Yes, it has. Um... Now, which one of these mods actually uses? It must be this one. This one absolutely must have Evil Jedi's um, Viscount. This is, of course, the um, Absolute Enhancement mod. Actually, no, it's the Absolute Corruption mod, which is the same mod only then for Force of Corruption with a couple of ships added. We're going to extract that and then we're going to look at it. There it is. The Viscount. Here we go. Uh, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the Evil Jedi Viscount, which looks very different, far more angular. Um, it has some very interesting engine configurations. Um, not entirely a fan of that, but I do like the general shape of this very much. Very much. Because it just looks so alien. I think it looks more more rigid than um, the warp null model. Far more weird ridges in between. It just it just looks more like a like a floating mountain, I think. And I, um, if you'll excuse me, I will take a sip of my drink right now. As I said, I, I did try to uh, finish my uh, my food before the stream started, but I didn't entirely manage, so. So I have some left. I actually think that what he did here is he took a box, just a simple box, and he, um, he set it up in a specific... Oh, and those ridges are the edges. That's actually very interesting. I definitely appreciate this shape a lot more than the very um, curvy shape of this, for example. I think this simply looks more interesting. And I think it also lends itself better to scaling it up to 17 kilometers. Which, of course, this is supposed to be 17 kilometers, but I don't think this looks like 17 kilometers. I think we can do a far, far better job at that. Not to say that Evil Jedi's models are bad, um, they're just very, very old at this point. This was made like 15 or so years ago. May have actually been more. Th this is very, very old content. I'm sure he himself would uh, would agree that you can improve upon them slightly. Um, oh god, sorry guys, I, I need to keep up with the chat. I, I'll keep saying it because I'll keep forgetting it. Um... So you clapped all the files on the ModDB page. I'm checking daily for new update. 
I want <laughs> I'm sorry man, but that's going to take a while. I don't plan to release the mod until uh, I think it is actually ready to be released. Um, and that's still going to be a while. Those Mon Calamari ships are so cool. Glad to see new ones. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Um, I've been editing the build times, cost and values in aura. Wow, that's all. <laughs> so it isn't six seconds for a fighter. You want them? Nah, man, I completely stopped development on that mod. You're free to edit it however you like, though. Have a look at the Viscount from the Usenfanget. <laughs> yes, that is simply Warped Null's model with a whole bunch of bad edits. You could get some interesting ideas. Well, I uh, I respectfully disagree. Um, Liren, welcome, welcome. Everyone, welcome to the stream. Um, I can't do shoutouts for every individual person, sorry. Um, good morning. Good morning yourself. The shares are beautiful from the last video. Now the dark and light difference is perfect. I absolutely agree. It is a massive, massive difference. The YouTube video destroyed the effect by like 50%, but even then it was still visible. It was so good. Um... Dang, and I hear and thought we would get some good chair eating ASMR. Well, I do have a piece of bread left, which I'm going to be biting into very soon, but you uh, definitely are not going to be hearing that. I will simply put the mic up. Drinking water of the day is very important, and to drink every few minutes is more healthy than to drink a whole bottle on a specific time. I agree. I was sick if I don't drink enough water. Looks a bit like an upside down radish. Right, that doesn't work in the AOV. No, no. Uh, I, I don't see that myself. Uh, but sure, we can look at uh, the Vongmod uh, Viscount. We'll, we'll have a look at it, and then I will tell you exactly what I think. Is is uh, not entirely great about it. Uh, keep in mind the uh, Vong Viscount is basically this one. It is Wormnall's Viscount only with a couple of edits. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time picking this apart because, well, we, we've got a job to do. If the image will load, of course. First and foremost, this ship is putting um, you've got spherical for spheres and then you got what for cubes? You got cubicle? No. Um, squarical doesn't exist as far as I'm aware. Blocky? I, I guess we'll just call it blocky. This ship puts blocky detail on a on a spherical ship. Um, I can't I can't apparently get the other image, and this is as far as I can zoom in. But I've seen this ship, and um, it's put blocks everywhere on a spherical model like this. I don't think that fits at all. Um, secondly, it puts turrets on the ship, which makes it look significantly smaller because the turrets on it are absolutely massive. And um, if you have seen my executor with the small turbo laser towers. The smaller you make the individual weapon systems, the larger the ship's going to look by comparison. And um, if you make um, all the turrets gargantuan, then that basically means that you make the ship look smaller by comparison. That's a very important bit of detailing. The same with these raised panels. The raised panels on this thing are absolutely gargantuan. Like Some of these would be like a kilometer long, and they'd be set out like 100 meters or so. That simply looks comically bad. Um, yeah, if 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 we were to use uh, someone else's ship, for example, if, if we were to use Warp ship, if I had to pick between Warp's Viscount and this Viscount, I'd actually prefer Warp's Viscount over this one. 
simply because of the edits. They don't add, they don't actually add anything. In fact, they only subtract, I think. Um. Am I doing it again? Yeah, I think it's pronounced Viscount. Viscount. Let's shoot a bunch of food. Hello, sir. Welcome to the stream. We are um, in the preparation stages of building our Viscount. Now, when I say preparation stage, I do actually mean preparation uh, stage. We are very much still um, deciding on how we are going to start the build, which primitive shapes we are going to use, and how exactly we are going uh, going to go about um, creating the the primary shapes of the ship before adding more detail to it. So I think we're going to do is very much. I, I, I just think this evil Jedi thing is amazing. It's great. Um, at least the general shape of it. There could be some improvement on the execution, I think. Not to shit talk evil Jedi again. I think he's a great model maker. Um, right. Edible poly. Set this up. There, I actually think that you can. Is it Control Click? No. Control Alt Click. Alt Click. Shift Click. Shift. Okay. Maybe Alt. No. Alt. No. What was the hotkey for setting this down to zero? No idea. I'm just gonna set it to zero, and then I'm gonna copy the coordinates, and then I'll just paste it. So what I actually think that he did here, to get the actual um, shape of this, is very simple. He didn't start with a sphere or a box like that. He took a normal box and then rotated it 90 degrees. At least, I think. That's what we're going to try. Uh, 45 degrees. For and, of course, we do need equal sides for that to work, because otherwise we're not going to get a good box um, width height 900 900 and we're gonna set this down to the center of the grid again and then we're going to rotate for the so this is gonna be our starting point this is gonna be the front view of our Viscount I'm not of course going to try to exactly replicate his Viscount uh, but I do think this general shape is beautiful and lends itself very well to making it seem like a massive ship. So we're going to definitely start with this general shape um, and we're going to work our way inwards um, to the rest of the ship. So now that that is done, what we have to do is we have to try to get the uh, the angles correct on the, uh, the sides. What we definitely need to do is at some point we need to angle this downward and have a sort of inset in between here to have the um, to create this front jaw sort of this being the front jaw and that of course being the top um, yes I think this is better to do this way Uh, yes. Let's, before we do that, attach this here. Change that to... What's the general angle of that? Yeah, it's about third of the way, maybe, maybe a fourth to the front. Something like that, right? Now what he does is he simply takes this angles it down. Oh, we do, we do of course have to remove the smooth ribs. Right, um, that probably works better if we do this. Now right now, of course, obviously this doesn't look like but um, of course neither did the Eclipse and the Executor when we first started building that so these things do take a bit of time to get going but these preparation stages I think are very important to um, well basically prepare for the rest 
which that didn't didn't come out right. See now I've got this. Uh, clear all. I thought I did that already, but I may have pressed auto smooth by um, mistake. This is a very sharp angle I've got going on. Maybe that's not exactly what we want to have. That is still horizontal, which I do intend to keep. But this also eventually starts angling downward, um, inwards, which starts about actually from the very point. It already starts moving inwards. Okay. So. That basically means we select all of this and we uh, do this. Now we need another edge connecting these two. So do that, go there, select these, weld them. And now that's okay. Um, let's see, how many vertexes are we going to insert? I don't know exactly how much the subdiv modifier can do for us and how much we need to do ourselves. So we can simply try a few configurations. Again, we can also go with every type of shape, basically. Here we can have a very uh, blade edge, we can have a very uh, sharp edge. It really all depends on what we want to try to incorporate ourselves. Um, so now I'm going to try the open subdiv and see how that looks. Yes, um, show. I, I do want my box if possible. Where's my box? There's an option for that, only I'm I'm not finding it. Alright, I have to turn off ice line display, if I recall correctly. We'll go here, and now we get our box back, right? Now this is of course not the shape we want to go for. Hang on guys, 